We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Gimel Amid Bezer Maseches Bab Metzia. This is Bab Metzia Daf Forty Three B. This Daf is sponsored by David Grossman. Thank you for your sponsorship. If you would like to sponsor an Amid or a Daf, see the description box below and see the description box below to see how you can support this channel. The Gemara is discussing the position of Beis Hillel in the Mishnah, and the Gemara now says El Pshita. Rather, it's obvious you have to say that when Beis Hillel used the term Kishas Hotzah, that you have to pay what it's worth at the time that it was removed from the world, at the time the deposit essentially was spent. It means to say. Really, Kishas Hotzah Mi Beis Bailam, it doesn't mean to say at the time it was spent, literally removed from the world. What it means is at the time it was misappropriated, essentially stolen from the owner. As Rashi explains, El Apshita Kishas Hotzah Mi Beis Bailam, we're talking about when it was taken from the owner, meaning Kishas HaGazela, that's another way of saying at the time it was stolen, at the time essentially it was misappropriated. And what's the Machlokas Beis Shameh and Beis Hillel? The Machlokas is as follows, Uve Yeser Pligi, they're arguing, they're arguing about a case where it increases in value. To call Amri Beishamai, because Beishamai say, Im Hukr, let's say it increases in value from the time it was misappropriated to the time that it was removed from the world. So they say, Yilke Lashalim Kishas Hotsam in Olam. They say you have to pay the higher amount, the amount it was worth when it was removed from the world. Well, Beishelel Amri and Beishelel say, Kishas Hotsam mi Beis Bailam. It goes from the time that it was stolen, essentially from the time it was misappropriated, taken from the house of the original owner. And so the Gemara says, if that is the case, it emerges that Beishamai is saying at the time it's removed from the world, that would be the equivalent, let's say, of stealing a barrel of wine worth a zuz, then it goes up to four zuz, and then you destroy the barrel of wine. And Rabbah said on the previous summit, you pay the higher amount. That seems just like Beis Shammai and not like Beis Hillel. And so that's why the Gemara now asks, Lema, let us say, Rabbah do Amr ke Beis Are we going to say that Rabbah holds like Beis Shammai? And so the Gemara says, you're right, Rabbah will have to explain as follows, Amar lach Rabbah, Rabbah will respond to you, Beyeser kuliyamalo pligi. Everybody would agree if it increased in value, everyone would agree the halacha would be like me, that you're going to pay the higher value, the amount of when the person essentially destroyed it, removed it from the world. Kipligi b'chaser. What's the machlokas b'shame b'tzilol? It's talking about, let's say, it depreciates in value, and the case would be as follows, or the machlokas would be as follows. B'shame savri shlichas yad ein atzricha chisarn. B'shame say that when you misappropriate a deposit, it doesn't need to have any, it doesn't need to have any chisarn, it doesn't need to lose any of the actual item. It could just be that you essentially use the item improperly. And so in such a situation, uh, that would be considered the shlichas yad. V'chichaser b'rishusa didei chaser, and therefore when it went when it depreciated in value, it depreciated in value in his rishus. And Rashi explains, Ki pligi b'chaser, the machlokas is, let's say it goes down in value. V'ko'amri beis hillel kashas hotzam in olam, and beis hillel would say that you have to pay the lower amount, the amount it is at the time it's removed from the world. Beis I say you pay the higher amount. U'dukokashalach, and that your question was, kol ha'gazlonin mishalmim kashas ha'gazela, that it says that all gazlonin pay like the time of the gazela, so therefore really they should pay the higher amount according to beis hillel. Ibe gazela mamish de gazla meikar. Now if the case is actually a case of gazela, where he actually stole it in the beginning. So hachinami, that actually would be true. You'd pay the higher amount. But here the case is that it's a deposit. He originally gets the item beheter. He gets it in a permissible fashion. And the case over here is that it wasn't really stolen, but it was misappropriated. That's what the chiyav is coming from. So so the machlokas beishamai beishol is as follows. Beishamai savri shlichas yad in a tzricha chisar and beishamai hold that to misappropriate the item, you don't need chisar meaning to say once he uses the item even though none of the item is missing none of it is lacking that's considered to be gazela it's considered to be stealing and now it's in the rishus of the gazlan when it then depreciates in value meaning in terms of market value it goes down, it goes down in the rishus of the gazlan and so therefore therefore if the item would still be in front of us you could just say take what is yours even though it's worth less. But but now that it's been removed from the world, according to Beishamai, he pays according to the time where he misappropriated the item. That's why, according to Beishamai, you pay the higher amount. And the Gemara continues, that when the Shomer misappropriates the deposit, it requires chisar, and there has to be some kind of depreciation. So at the initial shlichas yad, where there's no chisar, that's not yet considered shlichas yad. And then when it does depreciate, it's considered to depreciate in the rishus of the original owner, and that's why, according to Basilo, the amount that would be paid would actually be the lower amount, what it's worth at the time that it's removed from the world. But the Gemara continues, according to 
this answer, but according to that, that which Rava says, and he says that does not require chisar, it does not require that it depreciates. So, are we going to then say that Rava holds like Beishamai? Because we're essentially saying that Beishamai says does not require chisar, but Beisila says requires chisar. And so the Gemara says a different answer, Ella, rather, and here, what is the case? That he moved the item that was deposited in order to use it to get birds. He's going to stand on the item in order to retrieve some birds that are higher up. And so that's really a case of a Shoal Shalomidas. He's borrowing without the knowledge of the owner. And that's actually the machlokus between Beishamai and Beisilo. Beishamai Savri, Beishamai holds Shoal Shalomidas Gazlin Have. That if a person borrows something without knowledge of the original owner, that person is considered a thief. And so therefore, so therefore he's a thief at the moment it's stolen he already has to pay and when it depreciates in value it is depreciating in value in the rishus of the gazlan and therefore he pays the higher amount if somebody borrows without the knowledge of the original owner, that person is just considered to be a borrower. And therefore, when it depreciates in value, it depreciates in the rishus of the original owner, and therefore he pays the lower amount. But again, the Gemara says, but according to that, that which Rava said, according to the Rabbanan, is a Gazlan. So that would mean that Rava, are we saying that Rava holds like Beishamai, not like Basilo. And so the Gemara gives another answer, Elohacha, rather over here, Beshevach Shel Gezela Kamifligi. The argument is let's say you have actual physical improvement of the stolen property. Beshamai Savri Shevach Gezela Dinig Zalhave. Beshamai hold that if you have a physical improvement of the item that's stolen, that belongs to the Nigzel, so you pay the higher amount. Ubesilo Savri Shevach Gezela de Gazlan Have. But Basilo hold the physical improvement of the Gezela belongs to the Gazlan, so you pay the lower amount. And the Gemara continues, Uva Pluxa Dahani Tanoi, it's the same as we find in the Tanoim in the following Brisa, the Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa, Hagozel as Harachel, let's say a person steals a sheep, Gozazel, let's say he shears from the sheep, Vialdek gives birth to animals, Mishali Mosav, as Gizosev, as Valdo say, he's got to pay back the sheep, and he has to pay back the shearings, and also the offspring. Divrei Rebbe Meir, that's the opinion of Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Yehuda, Omer Rebbe Yehuda says, Gizela Chozer Sbein, it's just the item that's stolen, that goes back as is, and that's the same Machlokas between Beishamai, Beisil, Beishamai will hold like Rebbe Meir, you pay that and the shearings and the offspring, meaning you pay the higher amount. Rabbi Yehuda, Beis Hillel will go like Rabbi Yehuda, that you just pay the item that was stolen. And the Gemara says, Dekonami, the Gemara says, we can infer this as well from the language of our Mishnah. The Katani, because it says in our Mishnah, Beis Shammai Yomram Yilka Bechaser V'yeser. It says, Beis Shammai say you have to pay in the depreciation and the appreciation. That sounds like we're talking about actual physical appreciation or depreciation. Beis Hillel Omrim Kishas Hotzah. Beis Hillel, they say, it's Kishas Hotzah. So Shema Amin the Gemara says, indeed, you see, that's what they're arguing about. They're talking about physical improvements. And Rashi explains, Rava, the Gemara said that if you're going to explain the Machlokas is whether Shlich Hasyad needs Chisarin, but Rava said, Le'el B'Shemait, and Rava said earlier in our Sugya, Shlich Hasyad ain't it's Richa Chisarin. He said that Shlich Hasyad does not require depreciation. To come Shlo Tomar Shlich Hasyad V'chulu, that's what he said earlier. And then the Gemara said, Hadamar Rava, but that which Rava said, this was regarding Shoal Shalomidas, he said, Bahamochar Sasvina, he said in Baba Basra, Parakamochar Sasvina, Shoal Shalomidas, Lerabon and Gazlan. We said that the Shoal Shalomidas, according to the Rabbon, is a Gazlan. It's by the case a person sends his son to the storekeeper. There's a machlokas there between the Rabban and Rabbi Yehuda. And Rav explains that machlokas that it's talking about a shol And he says that according to the Rabbanan, a shol shalomidas is a gazlan, is a thief. And from the fact that Rav says that's the opinion of the Rabbanan, you see that he holds it that the Shoal Shalomidas is a Gazlan. That's the whole point. He wants to go like the Rabbanan. The Halach is always like the majority. So then we're going to say that he's following Beishamai's opinion. And so then finally the Gemara said, They're arguing about the physical improvement of the Gazela. When it says, when Beishamai say, when we talk about depreciation and appreciation,
depreciation. Lav v'yukra v'zula. We're not talking about depreciation and appreciation in terms of the market value that it went up or down in value. That's not the case of the mission at all. Ela b'may dechosra. Rather, we're talking about, let's say, the item that was stolen is now missing something. Dehainu gizos. That would be essentially you took shearings. You sheared the wool from the animal. Uvemay show siro. Or you can talk about something that increased. Kegonim nesab So let's say the animal became became pregnant by the thief. And so that's actually the machlokas Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. The Beis Shammai Savri HaKol Yishalem Ker Rabbi Meir de Brais of Beis Shammai is following Rabbi Meir of the Brais. Again, Rabbi Meir is talking about a situation of stealing and, and Rabbi Meir says you have to pay everything. And that's the same thing over here by Beis Shammai when we're talking about a, a, a deposit. He follows Rabbi Meir. O Beis Hillel Ker Rabbi Yehuda and Beis Hillel, they hold like Rabbi Yehuda Keshas Hotza Mi Beis Habaylam that you pay according to what it was at the time that it was essentially misappropriated from the owner. That's the time that it was stolen and so therefore you're not going to pay that those increases. You're not going to pay for the shearings and for the offspring. That's going to be the opinion of Beis Hillel. Beis Hillel is going to follow Rev Yehuda. And the Gemara said, Dekanami, we can prove it from the language of the mission as well. The Vigizo Suvaldos Pligi, that they're arguing about shearings and offspring. The Katani Lashon Chaser Vyeser, because what's the language in the Mishnah? It talks Chaser and Yeser. That doesn't sound like market value. That sounds like something is actually missing and something has actually been gained. Velo Katani Lashon Zol Vyoker doesn't say a language of, again, a appreciation or an increase in terms of market value, and so that's the proof from the wording of the Mishnah. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Rabbi Kiva Omer, Rabbi Kiva says, Keshas the amount that is paid is the amount it's worth at the time of the claim, essentially seems to be the time that the claim is being made in the court. And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Yudam Ar Shmuel, Rav Yudah says that Shmuel says, Halacha K Rabbi Akiva, the Halacha is like Rabbi Akiva. Umod Rabbi Akiva Bamakam Shiyesh Aidim, but Rabbi Akiva admits in a situation where there are witnesses, Rashi will explain that. My time and what's the reason for Rabbi Akiva? The Amar Kra, because the Pasak says, La Sherhu Lo Yitzinenu Biyom Ashmaso, it talks about paying on the day of his guilt, and so that's why we follow the Shas Hatviya, the Kavan de Ika Aidim, but in a situation where there are witnesses, Mayahu Shaitahu de Chayev Le Ashma. It's actually from the moment that the the witnesses are testifying that we say there is guilt. And Rashi explains, Umod Rabbi Akiva b'makom shiyesh edim. Rabbi Akiva would admit in a situation where there are witnesses, meaning, Kama hoi sashava b'yom shagazl. If there are witnesses that say what it was worth at the time of the actual theft, the ro shagazl heimeno, and they saw that he stole it from him, the mishalem kashas ha they would then admit that in that case, you pay kashas ha Essentially what we're saying, according to Shmuel, is that Rabbi Akiva understands if there are witnesses that saw the item being stolen, or in our case of the Mishnah being misappropriated, they saw the item being stolen and they know what it's worth at the time that it was stolen, you would certainly pay Kashasa Gazela. But if you lack those witnesses, then it goes Kashasa Tzviya. And Rashi continues and explains, My time at Rabbi Akiva, Damar Kashasa Tzviya. What's the reason of Rabbi Akiva that if you don't have the witnesses, you say it's the, like the time of the claim? Because the Pasuk says, meaning, You go by the value it was on the day that he is guilty, on the day that he's Chayef. And so therefore, let's say you have a situation where he claim, makes the claim from him, then he admits, so it's through his admission that he's chayef, so in that case, when he's in the court, when he's admitting, that's the yom ashmaso, that's the day of his guilt, and we follow the value at that time. But if there are witnesses, so then it's already from the time the witnesses saw the stealing, that's the time that he's guilty, that's why we make the distinction. In other words, we're always fo- following the Pasuk. When you have witnesses, it goes by the time the witnesses are testifying about. When you don't have witnesses, then it goes by the time of the actual trial that takes place in court, essentially like the example Rashi gave at the time that he admits. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Ravoshi le Rav Yehuda. Rav Oshi responds to Rav Yehuda, Rebbe Atta Omer Kain, Rebbe, do you say this? Hachi Amar Ravasi Amar Rav Yochanan. This is what Ravasi said that Rav Yochanan said, that actually, Cholak Haya Rav Yekiva, Afilu B'makam Shiyesh Edim. That Rav Yekiva argues, even in a situation where there are witnesses, and he says that even in that situation, we follow the Yom Tviya, the Shas Tviya. My time, and what's the reason? Do Amar Kruk, as the Pasuk says, La Sherhu Lo Yitinenu Biyom Ashmaso. Again, we're talking about Yom Ashmaso, the day of his guilt, 
It's really the Bezdin that is rendering him guilty, and therefore it always follows the time that the person is in court. It doesn't follow, even in a situation where there are witnesses, it doesn't follow that time that they're testifying about. It follows the Shas Hatzviya. And the Gemara continues, When you go to there, means to say, when you go to Eretz Yisrael, you should take the long route by the Sulma de Tzor, that's by the ladder of Tzor. And you should go to Rabbi Yaakov Baridi. And you should ask him, If he heard according to Rabbi Yochanan, is the halacha like Rabbi Akiva, or is the halacha not like Rabbi Akiva? Amar Lei said to him, Hachi Amar Rabbi Yochanan, this is what Rabbi Yochanan says, Halacha Rabbi Akiva Liolam, the halacha is always like Rabbi Akiva. My Liolam, what does it mean it's always like Rabbi Akiva? What's he trying to stress? Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says exactly what we said above. Shalot Tomar Hanimili Hecha Deleka Edom, don't say the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva only where there are no witnesses. Aval Hecha Dika Edom Lo, but if there are witnesses, we don't say that. No, the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva even where there are witnesses. The Gemara offers another explanation, Vi'inami, or you can say what he means to say the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva Liolam, he means as follows. Let's say the person returns it to its proper place and then it breaks. So we had a machlokas earlier, whether when you return it, you have to return it with the knowledge of the owners or not. And we're saying the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva, that that's not considered like returning it. We're trying to say not like Rabbi Yishmol. Rabbi Yishmol said, you don't need the knowledge of the owner, that's considered to be a proper returning. But that's what it's teaching us over here, like Rabbi Akiva Liolam to Vainan Das Bailam, that we need to have the knowledge of the owner that's not considered returning it properly. And the Gemara concludes, Varova Amar Rava says, Halacha ke Beis Hillel. The Halacha is like Beis Hillel. And Rashi explains again, Reb Zeir said to Rabbi Abba Bar Papa, when you go Lahasam, when you go over there, La Eretz Yisrael, meaning when you go to Eretz Yisrael, Akif, you should take the long route. Here, Besaderech, Vesivev, Derech Arucha, you should go around, go the long way, Al Dover Zela Leches, Derech Malas, Shalhar Tzur, to go by the steps, by the ladders of Mount Tzur. Malkam Shreb Yaakov Sham, that's the place where Rabbi Yaakov is. Uboy Mine, and then you should ask him, Masham Amir Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbo Al Kach, what did he hear from Rabbi Yochanan, who was his Rebbe about this issue? Call Malach Derech. Anytime you walk a longer route, they use this language of makif. Or you could say that we're saying the halach is always like Rabbi Akiva to talk about a case where the person returns the item to its proper place. That's why we say it's always like Rabbi Akiva. Lomar to say, Let's say a shomer returns the item to its proper place after he misappropriates the item. And then it breaks by accident. The halach is like Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva in this case as well, that he is held liable. The Amar Le'eli says earlier, that if a person steals a sheep from the flock, when you return it, you need the knowledge of the owners. The Rav Amar Halacha Kebeis Hillel, Rav says the Halacha is like Beis Hillel, meaning Keshas Kezele, we follow the time that it was stolen. The Anon Kirava Avdin, and we follow Rav, says Rashi, the Havalei Basra, because Rav is the later Amora. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, and if somebody thinks to misappropriate a deposit, Rashi explains, it means he says in front of witnesses, I'm going to take so-and-so's deposit for myself. So there we have a machlok, the person is liable. But Beisil says he's only chayiv if he actually misappropriates the item. It's not enough to state that. As it says, it says again in the Pasuk, if he did not misappropriate the item. Let's say the person who's watching the barrel, he tilts the barrel, and he takes from it a quarter of a lug, and then the barrel breaks, he only pays for that quarter lug, he doesn't pay for the whole barrel. But let's say he lifts up the barrel, and he takes from it a quarter lug, and then it breaks, and then he has to pay for the whole thing, because by lifting it up, he essentially acquired it, and he is responsible. And Rashi explains, again, we're talking about the case where he just states that, so Beis Shammai say he's chayiv in any accidents mehayom v'hola from that point from that day onward. Im nenas chayiv b'achrayis. If there's an accident, he is chayiv. He has to be responsible according to Beis Shammai. Again, Beis Hillel say he actually has to misappropriate the item. And then the Mishnah said he does a chavis if he tilts the barrel mil saban pe nafshi. This is a new case. If he tilts the barrel and takes a revius, he's only responsible for the revius. But if he lifts it up, he's responsible the whole thing. Again, vinishbral acharzman. So if it breaks after some time after he did this tilting. 
Ainu Mashalim El Ravias, he only pays for the quarter lug. The Shalich Hasyad, Ainu Mashai Ba Onsen, At Shayim Shochay Agbiya Da Havikniya, because when it taught when we talk about Shlich Hasyad, misappropriating the item that's deposited, you're only chaiv for onsim if you actually do a Kenyan. You have to do a Mashik, you pull the item, or you have to do a Hagba, you lift the item, you make a Kenyan. He Gabiya Vinatal now if he does lift it up and he takes it, so there there's a Kenyan, to have a Kniya, that's a Kenyan, Bahagbasa through the lifting, the Chisar and Minatilas Ravias, and then you also have a depreciation. In this case, he actually took the quarter of a lug. That's an actual physical depreciation. So then again, he's chayv in any accidents that happen. He has to pay for the entire thing. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Mem Dalid Ahmed Aleph.